The situation in Germany is so serious that even bishops and cardinals, one might call them liberal or moderately liberal, are frightened. It is not only conservative bishops and cardinals, even bishops close to Germany, who have warned their colleagues about the seriousness of the so-called German Synod, where it can lead the Catholic Church in Germany, but at least moderately liberal people who even supported at the time that the divorced could receive communion according to the circumstances, well, even they are scared. An example is Cardinal Casper, German theologian, is not just any cardinal. He's one of the most trusted men of Pope Francis. At the beginning of his pontificate, Pope Francis referred to him in the most praiseworthy way possible. Well, Cardinal Casper this week has said that what is happening in Germany is a coup d'etat, has defined it this way, we're facing a coup d'etat. Those are big words. A coup d'etat. He's not the only one. Last week it had been Schornborn, the Colonel of Vienna, who had spoken, but not in such a blunt manner. This week it was also a colonel who has already spoken before, a German colonel, Colonel Mueller, who said that we are not facing a heresy or a schism, but a massive apostasy of the church in Germany. Heresy is when a truth of the faith is denied. Schism is when subjection and obedience to the supreme pontiff is denied. For example, what Bishop Lefebvre did. But apostasy is when the faith is rejected in its entirety. Cardinal Mueller is right, because we are facing a problem of faith. They have lost the faith. These are the words of Cardinal Mueller, who is a great theologian, who is the one who is coordinating the care of all the theological work of Pope Benedict XVI since he was a theologian bishop, then Cardinal. He is a great theologian and agrees in the essential with different words with what Colonel Casper says. Casper, besides defining that we are facing a coup d'etat, Casper has also affirmed that what his German colleagues intend to do, his German, what they pretend is to make of the church and the deposit of faith a though that can be molded at will to adapt it to the world. The adaptation of the church to the world. What does a legitimate government do in the face of a coup d'etat? What it does is to use the resources at its disposal, legal resources, to confront that coup d'etat, to prevent the loss of legality. That is what any legitimate government does when a coup d'etat is carried out by some generals or whoever it moves within the law, but it, it acts. The question is, are they acting? It is true that things are being done and things are being said in addition to these interventions of cardinals. I'm sure that Cardinal Casper, when he has spoken, he has done it informing Pope Francis. But the Pope himself, according to a Jesuit magazine a few days ago, would have told Bishop Batzing, president of the German bishops, he said that there is a very good Protestant church there and that there is no need for another one. With this, he would be adding to the thesis of those who believe that the whole synodal path is basically a path towards the Protestantization of the Catholic Church. And the worst thing, and it must be said, is that it is not a question confined to Germany. This week, the French bishops have made public the results of the survey or 
study that has been carried out in the French diocese as a contribution to the Synod on Synodality. These proposals are practically the same as those being elaborated by the German bishops in their majority and by all the lay people who participate in the German Synod. And I believe that the Bishop of Essen in Germany, one of the main leaders of the coup d'etat, of the revolt, is right when he said at the beginning of this process that if a system was produced in Germany, it was going to be much more serious than the one Luther led, because it was not going to be limited to Germany, but would extend to the whole world. And I believe he is right. Now, I repeat, what does a legitimate government do when a coup d'etat takes place? It acts within the law, but it acts. Is it acting? Perhaps we don't have all the data and therefore we cannot judge. It's possible that some action is being carried out at a private level in addition to these statements of some or others. We don't know. But I think that at this time it is necessary that measures are taken. For example, it is necessary to inform the people of God of the seriousness of the situation. There are only a few of us who may seem crazy or obsessed, those who talk about this issue. It's a good thing that more and more prestigious people are joining. I repeat, I'm quoting cardinals who are not just anybody. The vast majority doesn't know what is happening, doesn't know the seriousness of what is happening. We must inform the people of God and we must ask the people of God to use the main weapon that we Catholics have, which is not bombs, not guns, it is prayer. We have to make a call to prayer asking for the unity of the Church and for the fidelity of the Church to our Lord Jesus Christ, a fidelity that includes naturally the acceptance of the entire Word of God, including St. Paul, which bothers them very much, and also the tradition as that Word of God has been interpreted for 2,000 years by the Church. I use again the words of Cardinal Casper, we cannot use the church and the deposit of faith as if it were though to be molded to the taste of each one to adapt it to the world. We must take action. Now I repeat, this action, which perhaps is being private, it would really be useful if we could know. Perhaps it's not appropriate for us to know, but if it were possible, it would be useful to know what is being done. Because the worst thing that can happen is that the impression, perhaps mistaken, that nothing is being done becomes generalized, because doing nothing is collaborating. There is a phrase in the educational world with respect to the education of children that I like very much. It says, in education, too soon is too late. Too soon is too late. I believe that at this moment we have already entered or we are about to enter that too late. If we do not act, starting by informing and asking for prayers very soon, if we have not already entered, it will be too late if we do not act. Another issue that seems important to me is the question of the Pope's resignation. Last week I referred to it in connection with the rumors about certain circumstances that seemed to some to indicate that he was going to resign this summer. My opinion, I said it, was that the Pope was not going to resign. It was, of course, my opinion. I said that I could be wrong. But this week the Pope, in an informal conversation with the group of Brazilian bishops visiting Rome, has said that these are rumors without any foundation, that he doesn't intend to resign and that he will be at the head of the church until God allows it. Well, I think that makes it more urgent than ever to pray for the Pope. We have to pray for the Pope. In this very difficult moment, with an ascism or apostasy at the doors, with the enemy at the doors, 
and with a more and more generalized confusion in the church, we have to pray for the Pope that he allows himself to be guided by the Holy Spirit, that he knows how to make wise, just, prudent, but also necessary decisions in order to lead this Church of Jesus Christ to a good port in this very difficult moment. Our weapon is prayer. The moment is especially difficult that Casper says that we are facing a coup d'etat, says it all. The moment is very difficult. We have to pray, and I ask in a special way to pray for the Holy Father. Until next week, God willing.